Right, welcome to IS3 Podcast. I'm Scribble. I'm here with a special guest, Just Ammo. Uh, he's uh, another player from Olympus. He's We've been friends for a little over a year. Neither one of us has actually played any games for almost a year, which is kind of funny. And we just started playing again. Ammo, you want to introduce yourself? What's up? I'm Just Ammo, Just Ammunition. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very talkative person. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, we act a lot alike on when we're playing games like we we both have like the same ideas and the same mindset when we, when we play play cow together and, and we just have a good time but uh he's actually on the cast today because uh over the summer over last summer he uh did a van build he built his own not the actual van he built a a livable van where he can live in his van and he went rock climbing um and just lived out of his van for three months what two or three months something like that yeah, about four months. Four months. It was like started in the spring and then ended October. So, nice. Where did so you like go? five months actually. What did you say? Where did you go? Oh, uh, well, I started in BC, and then uh, during the time I, I moved to uh, Alberta, moved to Calgary, and that's where I live now. And if, but, you, if in, you guys don't between, know, that's all. That's all in Canada, up there. Oh yeah, that's in Canada land. <laughs> In between, I drove around a lot, uh, mostly in Alberta. I mostly just went to like Banff area, which is just a little sort of like tourist town, sort of, in the Rockies. And yeah. So what, what did you just go rock climbing or adventure, mountain biking? What did you do? Uh, yeah, so I mostly went rock climbing, hiking, that kind of stuff. Hold on, I got to sneeze real bad. One sec. Bless you. Oh, it's coming! It's coming! Oh, okay. I'm gonna... it, it, it went away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that always happens. Yeah, so, always okay, so that. yeah, tell, tell me about your van build. Like, um, do you have any major problems or any? Was it just a simple build or what? So what did you, what did you was, do for your build? Uh, yeah, the biggest thing was what to do to like power the van, like for food and that kind of stuff, because. You can ha you can have a lot of stuff without refrigeration, but it's much easier to uh, cook for yourself and have like a variety of things with refrigeration. So what I did was uh, I had three ways I could power the van. One of them was I just had a line that basically went to like the one of the hot wires behind the firewall of the van, uh, which is just in the, like a little spot in the bottom where it stops fire from fucking spreading into the cab. So, so with that swear. with that power, you're saying with that power, you just had it from like your van battery as a power yeah, source. Yeah. So, okay. uh, no, it wasn't the battery. Uh, I had a separate battery. What that what that line did was uh, use the alternator to charge a massive commercial battery that I put into the cab. Okay. And yeah, and then basically that ran everything ran to a fuse box uh, with a huge massive like. 70 amp fuse or something like that 65 so in case of less power surge or something like that it wouldn't fry all the electronics and then the other form of power was 200 watt solar panels on top and if i needed to i had a little power inverter that i could run an extension cord to an outlet and it would convert the power and charge up the battery so you, so you could plug into like a house or something and it would charge everything yeah, I can plug into a house or one of those little posts they have in parking lots, you know, for the winter. I don't know if you yeah. have that where you live, but here uh, we've got like these little not, power posts that you can plug into. Not publicly for us to use, but we have them like on yeah, the Yeah, we have stuff. public ones. Yeah. yeah we, we, we don't have any public ones here. Um, yeah. So, and what's, what's your um, voltage up there? Is it is it 120 or is it 240? Uh, be, yeah, it was 120. I just had a little. Uh, 120 uh inverter that i found on amazon best place to get anything you need <laughs> throw amazon a plug there yep uh what? and yeah it was all basically the, this battery was massive uh, it's hard to explain but it was like probably two feet long and a, almost a foot wide and that is a massive it, battery <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was huge. And I just, I had that sort of behind the passenger or behind the driver's side seat. How much would that weigh? On top of it. Oh, that thing weighs like 75, 100 pounds, maybe. Jeez. It comes with these like huge, massive straps that you use. 
You remember those uh, those straps that used to be on um, infomercials of late at night where like you put your wrist through them and then like you slide them underneath like a fridge or something? Uh, I think that might be a little too old for my time. <laughs> uh, well, they have these straps. It was like a two person thing for moving, and it was it looked like um, like a toe strap almost. It was two toe straps. They had holes in each end. And you put your arms through, or you slide you slide it under whatever you're moving a couch, fridge, a heavy something heavy. And uh, okay. which I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, which was kind of funny because. The whole point of the straps was to make lifting easier, but you had to lift the thing to put the straps under it. But anyway, uh, so it was a two-person two person strap, and you after you put it under your arm, we're going to say a fridge. You put it underneath your fridge, put your arms through, and then you use your forearms to lift, and so you just have your hands on the fridge for, for stability, and then you're lifting with your forearms on both for both people. So it just, I, I can imagine you trying to do that to lift that battery. Was was my point? I was trying to get across. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it thankfully it, it's a battery that was so big it had straps built into it, and that's sort of what I was getting at. It had these straps built into it, and it also had places where you could mount things to it, like little places where you could screw in. So I I basically screwed in a board um, to these little like like brackets almost it had. And then on that board is sort of where I had all of the electronics, the inverter and the fuse box and all the wiring was sort of like tucked behind it because there was a little little space to make things neat. Um, so with, with your van build, did you do a whole conversion or did you just do like a a getaway van? Um, what, what, all did, what all did you have in your van? Uh, so I had a fridge, I had a stove, I built a bed and then... Uh, that's that's pretty much it. Some curtains. So I guess not a full conversion. It wasn't insulated or anything like that. So uh, a holiday trick. van, I guess. Then. Yeah, sure. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so okay, um, how much how much did all that cost you roughly? Um, I think the the if you want to cost in or like include the van price, the whole thing costs maybe about three grand. That ain't bad at all. Maybe. Yeah, no, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, that's that's cheap. How much was the van then? The van was eighteen hundred. Oh, so about double the price then for framing and carpentry and yeah, and all stuff. Uh, pretty much the most expensive things were uh, the battery and the uh, uh, what you call it, the solar panels. Yeah. The solar panels alone are like three hundred and fifty or four hundred dollars or something like that. All right, that seems simple enough. I'm I actually kind of want to, um, uh, because I I currently live in an RV because I I was traveling and now I'm kind of like stuck staying. I'm staying. I'm not really stuck. I'm just kind of staying where I want to be. I want to get back on the money making train and before I start traveling again. Um, and right now I have an RV and an RV costs so much money. Uh, oh yeah. The the insurance alone is thirteen hundred dollars a year, and I'm over twenty five, so I get the discount for for being over a certain age. Um, and I have liability only. It's it's all paid off and everything. So I have the cheapest of the cheapest insurance that I can get, and it's still thirteen hundred dollars a year, which is outrageous. Yeah, um, it's pretty fucking nuts. Yeah, and um, so what I have here, I have I have one bed. It's a queen bed. It's 40 foot long. I don't know if I've explained this in another podca- podcast or not, but it's a 37 foot RV. It's a class A, so it's the kind you drive. And the door's in the middle, like the side, the middle ish. And when you walk in, uh, you have like a living room area, like right in front of you, which it has a fold out couch um, and then a recliner. And then it has like fold out tables uh, I, one for the couch and one for the chair. Um, if you go left, you go into the galley, the kitchen area, and it's a pretty massive kitchen area. There's a dining room table attached to it. I have zero slides, so it's like a like a little tube that you're walking through. And I'm a big guy, and so like I have to walk, I have to shimmy sideways because I, if I walk straight, my my shoulders hit the door frames. Um, but I have <laughs> I have a fridge and freezer, <coughs> a fridge and freezer, sink, um, and a stove or oven and stove. And um, right now, I'm currently running on propane on my fridge only because uh, my fridge 
there's a circuit board that tells it they go either DC power running off the battery or it tells you to use propane or running off a shoreline, which is AC power. And the uh, the eyebrow circuit board that runs all that uh, got fried. And the only place that it's fried is the part of the circuit that says switch to AC. So I can still run DC and I can still run propane, but it won't run AC at all because that one, there's one little part that's fried on it. And nice. the I one went, part that you really yeah, the need. one part that I need. So I'm forced to run off of propane. And, um, so I go through, I usually it was five gallon propane bottles and, uh, one of them lasts about two weeks. I, I said, I turned about halfway on and it lasts about two weeks and it costs $15 to, to refill. So it costs me 30, roughly $30 a month to refill these to only run my fridge. That's all it does is run my fridge. Doesn't run anything else. Because uh, everything That's else, rough. Is, yeah, and everything else is on AC power. So what I'm trying yeah, to do, I'm, fixed, dude. I, they, well, they don't make it anymore. It's so old. They don't. I've called the brand, or I've called the company that made it, and gave them the part number, serial number, all that kind of stuff. And they, the, the person I talked to, pretty much had no idea what I was talking about because the fridge was so old. Um, and I went to a couple of local RV repair places, gave them the brand, all that stuff. And they no longer make the circuit board. They don't make this fridge. They don't make the circuit board. They don't make anything for this anymore. So the only solution, I have two solutions, three, well, technically three. I can either A, continue doing what I'm doing and just run it on propane. Or I can do two, where I buy a brand new fridge. I uninstall the one I have and reinstall a new one. Uh, but an RV fridge is like $1,500. For a, for a basic one. It's like 13, they range between like $1,300 and $2,500 because it has the, it has yeah. the three, the three way usage, the AC, DC and uh, propane. So I'm like, I'm not paying $1,500 for a mini fridge. That's what it is. No. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, like, I mean, I'm it's, sure if you have a look around, I'm sure you could find a mini fridge that would suit your needs. That's going to be like three, 400 maybe. Uh, Just still. A lot, well, I, but I, mean, I found a I found a four point seven cubic, I think it's cubic feet or something like that, cubic inches. I don't remember what it was, but it was like two hundred bucks at Home Depot. But what I'm yeah, thinking about bad. doing is the where the where the fridge is now, they if it's kind of it's lifted because my breakers are underneath it, so I have yeah. that, and then to the left of that, I have these slide out drawers that I never use. Like I had like canned food in them, but I never open them and I've eaten all the canned food out of there and I, or I put them somewhere else now. And so I, I never use these cabinets that are over there. So what I was thinking, if I can find a fridge that will fit through my doorway, my doorway is 20, 25 inches. So I have to find a fridge that's at least 25 inches or smaller in any di in any diameter. It's like a, it's like six foot tall, but it's only two foot wide. So yeah, so if I if I can find Sorry. like a, if I can find a house fridge even that'll fit inside that diameter, then hell I'll just I'll pull that I'll pull that inside and I'll rip those cabinets out and rip the uh, old fridge out, plug off the gas and then I'll just plug into AC and I'll have an actual size fridge. But even even a mini fridge like I, I'm because I'm full I full time live in here, and so like I have to I have to have you know leftovers, cold foods, milk you know that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, I have to have a fridge uh, for full time living, and so it's kind of ridiculous. So I'm so I'm currently looking for a fridge. But anyway, so and right you'd be surprised how long how long milk will uh, will last. Not in my house. Milk lasts a long time. No, no, no. no I mean, no, no. Uh, oh, without being heated. Without without being yeah without refrigeration. Yeah. Well, I'm in. I'm also in South Texas, so it gets hot here. So it, it that's true. Cut that last time in half. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so right past the galley is the bathroom. Um, it's a pretty big bathroom. It's, I got, uh, it's its own, it's in its own room. So I have a, a toilet, a sink, vanity, and a actual tub. Um, it's not, it's not a huge tub. It's maybe a foot and a half deep and maybe, uh, three feet, two and a half feet, three feet long. So it, it's something you can like wash your dog in, but you couldn't sit in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you. Um, but it, but it's an actual tub with a shower. Um, and then past that is the bedrooms, queen size bed, and a huge wall closets. 
um, the, with the slide closets and all that. Um, so it's pretty, pretty big area. Um, lengthwise, widthwise, it sucks. It's only like eight feet, <laughs> but uh, but I have like storage and chairs and couches and all sorts of stuff like on the side. So you really just have like a tube to walk through. It's kind of annoying. But so what I'm thinking about doing is I, why I keep asking about your van is because I'm thinking about converting a van because this I I haven't been or slept in the bedroom in probably four months. One, because the bed's uncomfortable. It's a queen-size bed and it's like too soft or something for me. I, I wake up with a backache every time. Um, or And so I just sleep on the couch. And I sleep on the couch now for two reasons, because it's winter time here in Texas. So in like the last three days, it's been windy and rainy and cold, and it's gotten down into the 30s at night, which is cold for Texas. And uh, so I have I have one of those uh, oscillating heaters, like a I don't know what's called, just a regular heater. And it oscillates. So yeah, I have yeah, that. I have, yeah, that, I have that sitting like in my. Man. Yep, I have that sitting in the front, like by my steering wheel and all that. I had that blowing all the way through the RV, and then uh, right next to the back door, or right next to the door, I have one of those electric fireplaces. Uh, it's fifteen hundred watts, um, and it gets pretty hot uh, over time. So whenever it gets too cold, I run them both. But most of the time, I just run the uh, the oscillating heater. Um, so yeah, having does the trick, man. yeah, how, having this area, the one the couch is more comfortable. When I fold it out into a bed, it's more comfortable to sleep on. And two, I have both heaters blowing opposite directions across the couch, so it stays nice and warm. <laughs> and my yeah. and the living room has the bigger TV in it, so so it's easier to watch TV and stuff in here. So I, I yeah, my much... sleeping situation was I basically made like a little platform that's about halfway up um, from like the floor of the van to the roof, so I could store things underneath of it, and then. I had it was basically just a, a couple of two by fours and like three quarter inch plywood on top, and then I had a little camping mat, and uh, I slept in a sleeping bag. And yeah, that's that. You and I had a hammock. I didn't. I didn't sleep in the uh, sleep in the van all the time. I usually just like wherever I parked. If there was a couple of trees, I just sleep on a hammock. Nice. Uh, oh yeah, this I was I was thinking Canada cold winter, but it's like no, you're in the summertime. So yeah, that was the summer. Yeah, <laughs> post up on a hammock. <laughs> really nice. So, but yeah, so I I watch a bunch of van builds and follow a bunch of travel uh, van lifers and all that stuff, and so I, I've been looking. I really wanted to like do a van, but as a full time somebody that has, I have two dogs. I've I have a lab and then I have another dog that's a puppy, but she's going to be as big as my lab in a van, which is only like a hundred square foot, hundred. Yeah. It's about 95, hundred square foot. Um, yeah. You'd yeah. want, you'd want a uh, stand up van. Yeah. And <laughs> plus I, tight. plus I need to be able to run the power for my computer, which I'm thinking, um, cause the computer takes up way too much. Space. It's my, it's my massive gaming computer and it's a large case yeah. and all that stuff. And it's just massive. So 750 thinking, watts probably yeah it is 750 watts um and so i was thinking like if i can just buy a laptop that does the, that has the same specs then i'm oh, gonna you go won't be able to buy yeah no or sure. it would cost us thousands like it'd be insane i mean i could probably sell this computer that i have now i could probably sell it for about 1500 maybe maybe a thousand yeah probably i mean because it's got a I gotta, it's got I a really good stuff in it way. I had to sell my old PC uh, and then sell my gaming laptop as well. Because, uh, I don't know, In I was thinking because the RV is just, it's just a hassle just to do anything. It's it's for living. So I have my car and I use that to, for my everyday drive. But if I had a van, then I wouldn't have to drive back and forth. Yeah, to, it's, it's both, yeah. To, to my home, That's a nice you know? Part. And so, but on the downside of that is that anything I do, I'm taking my home with me. So if I go through McDonald's or if I go, if I want to go to a movie or something, I'm bringing the van with me, which is the good, which is the good part of having an RV. 
because I don't have to do that. I can just take my yeah, car. I, I'd invest in a steering wheel lock considering it's your home. Right. And, but on the downside of it, is it whenever I'm done, I have to come back to where I'm at. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, like, and I'm, I think the, the a van is a nice, nice in between. Like, cause it's, you can just, you can post up anywhere, side of the road, whatever. Exactly. Uh, Especially I mean, if you've got some solar panels. Yeah. And, uh, and if, if I do a van build, my main thing is that, uh, I would make it, where I could shoreline as well. I could thirty. I could thirty amp to a shore, if needed. But yeah, of course. But the the downside, they I have two. or well, mainly just yeah, two downsides of why I wouldn't want a van. And one, it wouldn't have a bathroom in it. Like I'd have to. No, I'd have to no, buy a compost. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd have to buy a composting toilet, or stop wherever I need to go. And that's that's the downside. That's what I really like about having an RV is because I have my own bathroom. I can I can take I can get full nude to poop, you know. <laughs> I can sit back, relax, and enjoy myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, yeah. I feel <laughs> <coughs> so like that that would be like one of, one of the things. Like I would I would definitely want a toilet in there. Shower's not a big deal. I can I can you know go to twenty four hour fitness or something. Go to a gym and yeah, shower. Just, use the I would just swim. Um, and then the other downside would be the power. I, I need power. I need power for heaters. I need power for the computer. I need power to edit videos. I need power to do charge my camera equipment. I and so I'll just need massive amounts of power at all times. And so that, those are my two reasons why I haven't immediately jumped into a van build. Yeah, I think the uh, power, you know, it's not usually not an issue, especially if you can, uh, what's your, what, do, what do you call it, shoreline it? Yeah, shoreline. Yeah, yeah, if you can do that, like if you've got a place to do that, I mean, then psh, easy. And then oh, yeah. for backup, obviously, if you're traveling, it really doesn't matter. It's When it starts to matter is when you're post up, because that's when you start to take up power uh, and you're not producing it by driving, you know what I mean? Right. And... uh so yeah, I guess I guess shoreline would be fine, but on the downside of that is that if I'm going to be plugged into a shoreline, I'm I'm obviously going to be at an RV park or yeah, so, yeah. Some, somewhere it that depends. has shoreline. House, you know, wherever. Yeah, um, but so on top of that, the if I if I'm going to be parked at an RV park, might as well have a huge RV with all the space, you know? Yeah, true. So that and so I'm kind of like back and forth on that. Like I would I would love to travel more than I already have and just go go on the road park wherever I want you know for the night so I mean there's there's so much back and forth it's like you it, you can't have it 100% your way you know no yeah there's always you gotta figure something out yeah it's, you, got, you gotta give up something to have this or you have to you have to sacrifice that to have this so it's yep. kinda kinda like back and forth but uh, so so that's one of the things I'm really going back and forth on. They, however, I did uh, today. I renewed m- the lease to my house for two years. Um, and so instead of doing it year by year now, now I'm I'm set for two years. I have I have a steady income for two years, and it pays all my current expenses for two years. Um, so I have two years to either get a job, gather money, or sit around and do nothing and just collect and just pay my bills. Yeah, just, just relax. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, so my, and I talked to, um, the owner of the RV park that I'm staying at now, and she's perfectly fine with me staying here for two years. So, so I have, so at where it sits right now, I have an income and I have a place to stay flat out. So yeah, so I'm, I'm and so that's 100% secure now. So now from here, I need to decide if I want to, Get a job, collect extra money, or start start a van build and move on. Or I, I, that's why I gotta figure out if I, what I, what I want to do. Yeah. But so anyway, going back to uh, your travels over the summer, the um, 
you you built your van. You went tra- you hung out for four months in your van doing what? Snowboarding, rock climbing. Oh no no no! Hiking, which, <laughs> yeah, just do? rock climbing, rock climbing, hiking. Um, I would just like go around. Uh, I did a lot of climbing at the gym still, like indoors, because you know it's just a good place to train and practice the moves in a controlled environment. But um, when I was still in BC, there's this place. Uh, it's called dance park i think is whatever the locals call it um and it's just like a little rock wall where you can do a bit of climbing and i climbed there and uh did like some free soloing there and that kind of stuff um and once i was in banff there's pretty much climbing like all over the place there's grotto creek canyon i believe it's called or something like that and it has just it, it it's like a classic sort of canyon walls on both sides and uh, just good climbing through the whole thing. It's pretty awesome. All right. Well, let me ask you this then. All right. Uh, being, being someone like me, you had a house, an apartment, whatever you lived on the yeah. road. Uh, what would you, would you continue? Would you go back to go full time on the road or would you want to just make it oh, like yeah, a seasonal sure. thing <laughs> or? If I, if I had the money, yeah, but I don't I don't own a house like you do. I'm just a renter, unfortunately. All right, so let me ask you the uh like what what if you did like some kind of deliver like food delivery thing or you could work on um you could nomad like work on the work on the road somewhere. Like would you still would you just do um, full time? Yeah, I would. I I I would, but the reason I don't is because I want to get more established. Like I want to have a house before I do anything like that. So you're saying, you know I mean? like so I'd you're be, saying you want to be like me. Yeah. Yeah. Basically like I, I want some sort of stable income before I do something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so to ensure that I had money. Yeah. Um, cause and, you don't want to go fucking hungry or anything like that. Oh yeah. Been there before. And, uh, so, uh again with the RV part, is it, if I had if I had a van if I was traveling in a van, they they get roughly like what four hundred miles to the tank roughly something like that, and then uh, I don't know about miles but I get like a hundred, some or like uh, five hundred kilometers to a tank I think. The it's about four hundred miles three to four hundred miles I think. Yeah okay. Um, yeah about three hundred fifty. Um, so and a tank is like what forty bucks fifty bucks something like that. Oh no no like seventy eighty, really? Yeah, gas is expensive here. Uh well, it's two dollars here right now. Yeah, uh, and that's for a gallon, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you guys go off of liters. Yeah, we go off of liters. So ours right now, ours, <laughs> we got like ninety cents a liter. So do the conversion yourself; it can get pretty expensive. <laughs> All right, let me uh, look this up real quick. So okay, so with my RV, what I was getting to, um. There's two gallon conversion. Um, so my um, my RV it has a seventy eight gallon tank. So one liter US one liter is zero point two six gallons. So let me if I switch these. Um, so if I get about 700 miles to the tank on a 70 or 79 gallon um, tank. Here's gallon liter. Okay, so one gallon is 3.7 liters. So you paid. Okay. So you paid 90 cents. Point 90 times what was it? 3.7. So about three, yeah. Your gas is about double what ours. Is. Yours three thirty three a gallon, and we and we pay uh, pay. Uh, I got gas yesterday and it was a dollar dollar ninety three a gallon. So if I do point or one point nine three times three point seven eight liters, they not right. Uh, be like seven bucks. That's not right at all. We do what is it? 
uh, 3.78 liters is one gallon. Oh, so you're you're um you'd be paying almost oh, here, three here, here, bucks. Yeah, three here, bucks a gallon yeah, here, almost. Okay, here's what it is. It's um it's one is that one point, some troubles, I ask you? Yeah, well, I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to do. Okay. <laughs> one point nine three gallon yeah. divided by um three point seven eight. That would make it, there we go, 50, 51 cents a liter. That's what I was trying to get to. So, uh, so yeah, so we pay 51 cents. So we pay almost half of what you do. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Um, so, okay, so anyway, um, my whole point my whole point of all this, they it cost me $200 a tank to go 700 miles. Uh, and so if I'm paying... If I'm paying even fifty dollars a tank, and I can go four hundred, then I'm paying a, f- a quarter of the cost in gas uh, to go oh, yeah. to go half the distance. So that sounds uh, about right. Yeah. So I can. So for a hundred bucks, I can go the same amount that my RV can, maybe even more, for half the cost. That that would be a good that'd be a good thing for the Swiss being so save a lot more on gas, and the insurance for it would be much cheaper because it'd be a vehicle because RVs have their own insurance, um because they're not a house oh, and yeah. not a car it'd, it'd be, yeah, yeah it'd just so, be a regular old yep so I, I'd only yeah. have to have I'd only have to have in, like uh, basic vehicle insurance so that's that's what I want to do I want I want to convert a van. That's the way, and I don't, I don't bike ride or anything. But I guess I could start. <laughs> what's the what's the whole saying? It's yeah, like riding a bike. Get a bike rack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, like even I, I think some of like the travel bikes nowadays they they break down into uh, like you take the the wheels and forks off, and then you you can lay it flat with like a frame, you fit it into like a small cubby, even. I think it's how it is nowadays. Yeah, I was gonna. Um, I at one time I was going to uh, get a bike rack. And I just decided not to. Like I, I could just drive where I was going. <laughs> yeah, that's and that's that's the bright side. That's the beauty of having a van to do that. So yeah, because when I, when I first started my travels, I actually thought about it's like, well, I'm just gonna sell my car because I have the RV, and I'm really Ooh, glad yeah. I didn't. Good thing because, you didn't. Yeah, so I'm really glad I didn't do that. I'm assuming you just tow your car, correct? Yeah, I have a yeah. Uh, I have like a little tow. Uh, it's called a dolly, and what it, it's um, it's like two yeah, wheels. It's, it's, yeah, it's, little, it's yeah, two wheels gotcha. on a tongue that attaches to my RV, and uh, I drive my car up on the up on the two wheels, and then uh, I strap it down, and I just go. Which I'm which, which put down. yeah, which makes my RV like sixty five feet long. It's long. Nice. Because my R, well, my RV is thirty. Well, it's it's forty foot after like the bumpers, so I got forty foot, and then I have like a three foot gap between, um, where the tongue is for the car. So it's so now we're at forty three, and then my car is like eight foot long. Jesus. So, so I'm at roughly fifty two feet once when everything's connected. That's that's quite the distance. That's a. Uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of car to be pulling. Oh yeah, that yeah is. so so like I'm I'm the same as a trucker. Like I, I have the same length as a big rig. So and and since I'm on since I have the uh, the dolly, I'm on a I'm on a uh, third wheel axis when right turn. So I can't I can't like left to le- left turns left. You know, like when you're backing up. No, left turns yeah. right for me because I'm on that that third wheel axis. Yeah, you've got like a trailer, yeah. Yep. And so so it's kind of weird. And with this doll, you can you you have to be really skilled at backing up. Yeah, I was going to say just never back up ever. Always yeah, pull in. <laughs> yep. And there there was actually a time I had to back up just a little bit, but it was more because of I was trying to do I was trying to turn around 
and I couldn't quite make the turn, so I'd like back up just a little bit to continue making the turn. Yeah, but, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that was that was fun, especially somebody like I've driven like sports cars all my life, or like uh, coupes, like uh, two door coupes, and yeah, um, yeah. Ba- barely any size car, and I jumped to 50, 52 feet overnight. Like, all right, well, that was a fun yeah, experience. Yeah, that'll uh, that's that's a jump. <laughs> so, but it looks like we're running up on our timer here. Uh, you got anything else? Uh, you got anything to close with? To say anything? Oh yeah, uh, van life's great. Li- living off off on the road is pretty awesome. Uh, you know, don't make fun of people who do it because it's sick, and everybody everybody should do it. It actually is becoming the new thing, to be honest. It's the new hype. Yeah, I know, but it's like a hipster thing right now, which makes it even worse. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I guess, but yeah, but yeah, it, it does like, like it's another. it's uh, really it's the new thing. They everyone, um, especially down here in Texas, like every, hardly anybody lives in a house down here. Like if you live in a house, they like you're either rich or you don't plan on going anywhere ever. Um, you're, like you're here for the long haul if you own a house. But er, like yeah. everyone down here, there's there's more RV parks, where at least where I'm at, there's more RV parks than there are housing complexes. I get um, interesting from from where I'm from where I'm sitting. If I go twenty miles into the main town, um, I pass. I think I pass eight or nine RV parks. In 20 miles. Oh, I'll be I'll be right back. One sec. All right. Well, we're actually going to wrap up the podcast. Uh, uh, thank you guys for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, you got any? You got a YouTube or anything to plug? All right. Take that as a no. Uh, thank you guys for listening to IS3 podcast. Uh, if if anybody does van life or travel in a van or done. Uh, has done a like a weekend getaway or not a weekend but like a summer getaway in a van like uh, like ammo has here uh let us know down in the comments below and we will see you next time <laughs>